start by cutting out all of your panels. You want a piece of fabric for your outer that is seven and a half inches wide by five inches tall, and a piece of either fusible batting or regular wadding that you can attach using spray glue or by basting on your sewing machine. You want another piece for the inner, which is, I've used the same fabric, but you can use a different fabric if you want to. It's the same measurement, seven and a half by five, and a piece of lightweight fusible interfacing just to stiffen it. So that's gonna be your inner, and that's gonna be your outer. For the inserts for your needle, you need a small piece of felt. This measures five and a half wide by four inches deep, and that is all you need to construct your sewing needle case. So start by fusing your fabric to your wadding or glue spraying it or basting it, whichever you choose. Um, and also attaching your interfacing to the wrong side of your lining fabric. Once you've attached your interfacing and your wadding to your panels, set your outer panel to one side and take your inner panel or your lining piece interior piece shall we call it and you're going to press it in half widthways and you can just finger press to find the center and then take your piece of felt and again you're going to press that in half widthways you can press it with the iron if you want to or you can finger press it open up your interior piece and open up your felt and you're going to match your two press lines you want to position your interior felt panel so that you have an equal amount of fabric showing at the top and the bottom. If your felt panel is cut slightly wrong, um, then when you sew the whole thing together, you're going to end up trapping this in. So you need to make sure that you have more than a quarter of an inch of fabric here and here. If you haven't, you can just trim down your felt just by a quarter of an inch along the top or the bottom edge to make it fit nicely. Once your felt is positioned centrally and you're matching up those two crease lines, just pin it in place and you're then going to run a line of stitching down the middle of your felt. So you can do a back tack at the start and the end. What I personally like to do is just sew from the very top of my fabric all the way down to the very bottom and that way you've got no ugly back tacks in your felt here and it will all become secure once we sew the whole thing together. Once your felt panel is stitched in place, simply take your outer panel, flip it right sides together on top of your lining panel, and then you're going to stitch all the way round. But you're going to leave a small opening. I like to leave it in what will become the back side, so this right hand side here. I leave a small opening, probably a couple of inches in the side to allow me to turn. So I'll start here with a back tack. So all the way round, pivoting at the corners, come back to my opening and finish with a back tack. So I've got an opening just here in the right hand side. Once you've sewn all the way round with a sharp pair of scissors, you're simply going to remove the bulk from the corners. So cut across, being sure to mind your stitches. And you're going to do that on all four corners. Then you can take a chopstick and you can turn your little pouch in the right way through the opening in the side here being sure to poke out all the corners with your chopstick. Be careful when you're turning this in the right way that you don't pull on the felt because it will stretch it out of shape. Once you've turned it in the right way, then you're going to turn in your opening, the raw edges to the inside, take it over to the iron and give it a really good press all over making particular attention to this opening here so that it's nice and neat and then you're going to run a line of top stitching all the way around the edge you'll need to start move your felt out of the way you'll need to start here and top stitch this side first of all and then flip the felt over and top stitch the other half you won't be able to go all the way around because you'll find that your felt should meet the ends of your little wallet. Once you've top stitched it all the way around, you can give it a good press on the iron. Now I'm gonna add a little cam snap fastener just to the edge here, just to hold this together. You can just leave it be if you don't want to put a fastening, or you could stitch on a little popper. Alternatively, if you wanted a loop of elastic with a button, then you can go and check out my YouTube tutorial for the tea bag holder, which I'll link up here. Um, and you can attach an elastic to the inside edge, but you need to do that before 
before you sew all the way around the outside of your wallet. So go and check out that tutorial if you fancy including a button loop with an elastic. So I've added my little cam snaps. I did need to trim back my felt just a little bit to allow my cam snaps to fit, but you can just do that if you need to. But as you can see now, you've got a nice little felt fold for you to pop your needles into. And you can also put needles into this part as well if you want to. And it's just the perfect accompaniment to our little scissor keeper that we released last week. I will link that at the top. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.